Absolutely. Well, the battle for baby Charlie Gard's life continues tomorrow. A New York doctor will assess his condition in the UK. But despite all these developments, the big three networks giving it less than five minutes combined in the past week. Here to react, Fox News religion contributor Father Jonathan Morris. Good nice morning. to see you this morning. It's a Father. super important story, not just for Charlie Gard, most importantly, of course, but also for where we're going in terms of our health system in the United States and who has the right to make these decisions. So on Friday, this UK judge had ruled that a US doctor is allowed to travel there. And you'd think that that movement would get the stories on national coverage, that there would be movement and <laughs> all the major networks would be covering it. Okay, but, but what blows me away is why is a court the one making these decisions? You know, there's legitimate, I think, debate about the prognosis for Charlie going forward. There's legitimate debate, I would say, also about how much is too much medical intervention and how much is it good for the good or is it putting somebody into... Um, into uh, either a dangerous situation or a, very, or a very painful situation. But there is no debate about who has the right to make that decision for a little baby. And it's the parents. It should not be the courts. It should not be the hospital. And that is what it, I think is shocking. Looking from the outside, the, the, new, the news media should be talking about that, and they're not. It's not just about whether or not Charlie Gard gets better, but it's who is making these decisions. And to have a court making that decision is crazy. It's such an emotional one. I, I'd love to get your thoughts on this because this was a big story towards the end of the week. This photo, I know you saw it of pastors mm. that were praying over President Trump. They had their hands on their head. I don't know if we have that photo there, but the mainstream media kind of jumped on the story mm. and they ended up turning it into something that wasn't actually true. And it seems like they don't want to touch religion. They don't want to acknowledge it for what it is. What was your reaction? Well, you know, to that? it's the snark that bothers yeah. me. The, right. the snark of, oh, look, so here this guy, Donald Trump, is not really very Christian, according to the big, you know, a lot of the media. And so, how can they really be praying over him that somehow th that, that is. They're blessing that's him. Hi yeah, that's right. like um, hypocritical or um, that it means all these pastors have completely bought into everything that Donald Trump says and does. That's not true. There is a long tradition in our country of pastors uh, praying with and advising presidents. And uh, a president is in a situation, any president, in which he needs good advice and he needs independent advice and he needs our prayers. But, so the snark is what bothers yeah. me. But, Father, going more globally, isn't this sort of a knock against displays of religion, no matter how small, no matter yeah. how private, just That's in society in general. We see these uh, prayer circles at football games that are being yeah. attacked and things along those lines. What's your well, response I, to that? I don't think you would see that p a picture like that, for example, in Europe. Uh, of pastors getting around a president or a prime minister and praying over them. You wouldn't see it. And thank God we have a long tradition in the United States of America uh, where that public dis display of religion or of spirituality is very natural and normal because religion and spirituality is not meant to be kept inside the, the four walls of a church, but it's meant to be lived in, in our daily lives. And unfortunately, it seems like it's getting harder and harder to You're be right. able to display that. But luckily, we have people like you. Thank you very much. Out there saying that this is what we need. And settled debate for us today's National Ice Cream Day. <laughs> oh. Favorite ice cream. Oh my gosh. Um, we have a whole line of about. I would say cookie dough. Cookie dough. Yes. Cookie dough. That's a good number five one. on the list. It is number <laughs> five on the list. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Raw cookie dough. So I haven't had it in many, many years. So but that's well, a good that's one. Tasted good last time. Father John, grab some Thank on your you. way out. I will. For your homily. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you.